Today we're tackling Base64 encoding. Base64, yeah, it's one of those things in cybersecurity that uh, seems a lot more complicated than it really is. Right, you run into it every day and probably don't even know it. It's true. To get why it's important, you gotta like think about the digital world and how it struggles with anything that isn't plain text. Okay, I'm listening. So imagine you're trying to send like, I don't know, a picture. Right through a system meant for, well, just text. Yeah, it'd be a mess. Total mess, like shoving a, oh, I don't know, a giant cake through a mail slot, not gonna be pretty. And we're talking more than just a, a few crumbs here, right? <laughs> You're like, this could actually crash systems if we just started sending images and videos as is. Exactly, that's where Base64 comes to the rescue. Think of it like uh, translating that cake. We're not sending the messy actual cake, but instructions to rebuild it, you know? Interesting, so you're turning the ones and zeros, that binary, into something that can travel nicely with text. Yes. We're converting it into a safe alphabet, 64 characters, A to Z, A to Z, 0 to 9, and a couple extras just for fun. So instead of getting a jumbled mess that could, uh, I don't know, break things, we get a nice string of characters. Precisely, and this is important. It's not encryption. You're not making a secret code. You're just switching languages so everyone understands. It's not really about secrecy like encryption is. Oh, right, right. It's more about compatibility, you see. Okay. It's... Encoding, not encrypting. Got it. Yeah, people get that wrong a lot. Okay, now I'm really curious. Where are we seeing Base64 every day and just not realizing it? Well, let's see. You know that email attachment you opened earlier? You mean those ones I tell myself I'll get to later? Maybe. Anyway, Base64 probably helped that get to your inbox without any issues. But you mentioned before about malware. How do they use this? This is where it gets tricky because Base64 just changes how data looks. Hackers can use it to disguise bad stuff. Like imagine they want to sneak a malicious link into your inbox right past your spam filter. Uh-oh. Exactly. They can encode that link with Base64 so it just looks like harmless text. Then you click it and- Game over. Potentially. This is why knowing about Base64 is so important for cybersecurity. It's like, I don't know, a decoder ring to help you spot shady stuff online. Okay, you've convinced me. Teach okay. me the secrets of this Base64 thing. How does it actually work? All right, let's break it down. Let's take a simple word, uh, B. First, we convert that into what's called hexadecimal code. It's just a different way of writing the information, like using a different alphabet. But it still represents B. Exactly. Then we take that code and we turn it into binary, you know, ones and zeros. Okay. Now here's where it gets fun. We group those ones and zeros into chunks of six. Six, because it's base 64. You got it. And each chunk of six matches up to one of the characters in the base 64 alphabet. After all that, B turns into, get this, QMVL. Wow, it's like magic. Right. Just by changing how we group and represent the data, we get something totally different. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now there's one more thing. Padding. Padding. Is that like um, extra security? Kind of. Remember those chunks of six? Yeah. Sometimes things don't divide perfectly into six. When that happens, we use extra bits, padding, to fill in the gaps. And we see those equal signs. Remember those? Those sneaky equal signs. They're everywhere online. I always yeah. thought those were just like there. I never knew they had a purpose. Oh, they have a very important purpose. Yeah. Those equal signs, they act like little flags. Okay. To tell the decoder, hey, we added some padding in here just so we can make the math work out. Just ignore these bits when you're, okay. you know, decoding this message. So it's like a little secret handshake. Exactly. Between the encoder and decoder. You got it. To make sure the translation goes smoothly. Yeah. Say we want to encode beers instead of just B. That extra S messes things up. So we use padding. And the final base 64 will have equal signs to show us those extra bits are in there. So that's how it decodes yeah. without any mistakes. Smart. Okay, so we've got our text. It's in this base 64 language traveling safely. But how do we actually decode it on the other side? Do I need like a secret decoder ring? No decoder ring needed. Oh. Luckily, we've got tools for that. For the techies listening, you can use the base 64 command in Linux. But there are more user-friendly ways, too, like Notepad++. It has encoding and decoding built right in. And then there's my favorite. CyberChef, right? You mentioned that earlier. I'm yeah. dying to hear all about this Cyber Swiss Army Knife. CyberChef is really cool. It's this free platform, and it's like a, I don't know, a playground for anyone who's into cybersecurity right. or anyone who just likes working with data, really. So it's beginner-friendly. Totally. It has this drag-and-drop interface, so you don't need to be a coding expert or anything. So if I wanted to, like, see Base64 in action, how would I use it for that? Let's say you find some weird text online and you think, hmm, 
maybe this is base 64. Okay. You just pop it into CyberChef, use the from base 64 tool and boom, it decodes it right there. No way. It's super helpful if you're like looking at a suspicious email or trying to figure out how malware works. Or if you just want to play around and see what's hiding in plain sight. Exactly. So anyone listening could download this and start like experimenting with Base64 themselves. Absolutely. And I encourage it. Once you know how to spot Base64, you'll start seeing it everywhere. So to bring it all home for our listeners, what's the main takeaway here? Base64 is like... Uh the building block for so much of the PEC we use every day. And understanding it even a little gives you a better understanding of, well, the whole digital world. Like unlocking a secret level of the internet. Exactly. I like it. <laughs> no more hidden messages for us. <laughs> well, thanks to your expertise, I think we can all surf the web a little safer now. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into Base64. For more videos with Linux tips and tricks, make sure you watch these videos here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe, Thanks for your time and happy hunting.